Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. And this video is going to be about genetics, law of probability and statistics. And here is a problem. Genus Brother Joy died of rare x link recessive genetic disorder that causes severe birth defects. Uh, Gina has just married Albert, who lost a brother to the same disease. If Gina and Albert have five boys, what is the probability that none will be affected? So, uh, we would start solving this problem by building a pedigree for the genus family. So, Gina had a mother and, of course, a father. And this couple had two children. One was a boy and one is a girl. We know that boy was affected with this genetic disorder and died. So we cross his sign on this pedigree and we instantly know of course uh, that his genotype was defective X chromosome. I am using red color to designate defective X chromosome and green color to designate um, normal chromosome. In this case this is a boy so genotype is X Y. So the question is, can he get this defective X chromosome from his father? And this is not possible because all the boys get the Y chromosome from the father and uh, X chromosome from the mother. So um, could his father to be affected with this genetic disorder? Not. Also by the reason because this genetic disorder causes severe birth defects at early childhood. So um, that means that uh, it is impossible that his father was a carrier or was affected with this genetic disorder. And we can put his genotype here. So he had normal X chromosome and normal Y chromosome. But his mother, those being phenotypically normal, have to be a carrier. So she have to have one defective X chromosome and one normal X chromosome. So because this is recessive x link genetic disorder, his mother were phenotypically normal because uh, those she had defective allele on the one of the X chromosomes, it was balanced with dominant allele on the other X chromosome. What is the probability for the gene to be a carrier just like her mother? And we can find this by building a Punnett square of this family. So we know the genotype of the father is normal X and normal Y chromosome. We also know that uh, mother have to be obligate carrier of this genetic disorder and when we build the Punnett square we can predict probability for their children to be affected with this genetic disorder or to be a carrier. So here we have normal X chromosome from the mother side and normal X chromosome from the father side and normal X chromosome from the mother side here and normal Y chromosome from the father side, defective X chromosome from the mother side and normal X chromosome from the father side and defective X chromosome from the mother side and normal Y chromosome from the father side. And as you see, 100% uh, of the female progeny would be phenotypically normal, those 50% of them uh, would be carrier of this genetic disorder and also 50% of the male progeny would be phenotypically and genotypically normal and 50% of the male progeny would be affected with this genetic disorder and once again as I said earlier father gives Y chromosome to uh, his uh, male progeny and X chromosome male progeny gets from the mother side so it is impossible for a father to give defective X chromosome to the male progeny.
Now we have to find probability for the Albert and Gina to have uh, affected or unaffected progeny. We know that Albert have to be phenotypically and genotypically normal because he is adult and this genetic disorder, x link recessive genetic disorder, cause severe birth defects. So he is obligate uh, genotypically and phenotypically normal. So he would belong to this genotype and this couple may have affected progeny as you see only if Gina would be a carrier just like her mother. And we have find that her probability to be a carrier is one half. So probability for her to be a carrier is one half. Let's put this number here. So once again, let's read the question. If Gina and Albert have five boys, what is the probability that none would be affected? So we have to find if they would have five children, uh, not children, five boys, and uh, that none would be affected. So first boy, second boy, third boy, fourth boy, and fifth boy. So once again, probability for the Gina to be a carrier is one half, and if she is a carrier, probability for her to have unaffected boy, unaffected uh, male children would be also one half. So as you see, we have to multiply this probability by this probability, and we would find that probability for the any male progeny in this family to be unaffected would be one quarter. And the same rule applies for the affected children. Probability that uh, boys would be affected also would be one quarter. But our question is what is, uh, what is the probability that all five boys would be unaffected. So probability would be the same for each boy. One quarter is probability that each boy would be unaffected with this genetic disorder and each pregnancy is independent event. So we have to multiply all these independent events and we have to use rule of multiplication because this is independent events. So imagine that male gametes are sperm and female gametes are eggs. So uh, male can produce two kinds of sperm where the sp uh, spermium may have X chromosome or Y chromosome. So all these crosses are totally uh, independent. So in other words we can say that uh, one quarter raised five. So one quarter multiplied by itself five times would be the same as one quarter raised five. And the answer would be one chance out of 1024. And this is going to be our answer. If you need an answer in percentage form, you have to find decimal number. You have to divide one by 1024. And next question, if Gina and Albert have uh, three children, what is the probability that exactly one will be affected in any order? And uh, once again, I want to emphasize that uh, in the first question, we were given that this couple would have five boys. But this time it is different and very important that here we have three children. So sex is not specified. So we have to keep this in mind this would affect our calculations. So uh, we asked if Gina and Albert would have three children, what is the probability that exactly one will be affected in any order? So we are looking for uh, 
affected one child if this couple would have three children in any order. So what the order could be, uh, once again, I would use green color for unaffected. So uh, the first variant could be an affected child, an affected child, and then affected child. The second variant could be that the first child would be unaffected, the second would be affected, and the third would be unaffected. And the third variant would be when the first child would be affected, and then an affected and an affected child. So uh, this is three possible variants. Once again, sex is not specified. Let's return once again to our Punnett square. As you see, quarter of the children in this family, uh, if mother would be uh, heterozygous for this trait or would be carrier, uh, quarter of the children would be affected. That means, let me put this number here, one quarter. That means that three quarters of the children would be unaffected. Those 50% uh, of the girls would be carers, but still three quarters. Let me circle the three quarters would be unaffected with this genetic disorder. So three quarters plus one quarter equals to one or to one hundred percent. So one here equals to one hundred percent. So uh, now we can use these numbers in order to find the probability for each order. So what is the probability that the first child would be unaffected? And this is three quarters. So three out of four. For the second child, once again, this is going to be three quarters. And for the last child to be affected would be one quarter. And for the second row, we have three quarters here, one quarter here, and three quarters here. And the last variant would be one quarter, three quarters, and three quarters. Once again, because this is independent events, each pregnancy is independent event, we have to multiply all these probabilities. And for the first variant, uh, probability would be 9 out of 64. Here we have the same probability, 9 out of 64. And here also the same probability, 9 out of 64. As you see, we have three variants here, and we got probability for each variant. So this time we have to use rule of addition, and we have to add this probability to this probability and to this probability. So we have to add all these three probabilities. So 9 over 64 plus 9 over 64 plus 9 over 64. And the answer would be 27 over 64. Or in other words, uh, this is roughly about uh, 50%. Once again, you can find a decimal number by dividing 27 by 64. And this is how you would find uh, probability in percentage form. And this is all for today. Thank you for attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.